Welcome to a new video here on the channel. Great to have you back on board. Today we're talking about the new Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra because it's been with me in my everyday life for the past week and I just want to share my first impressions with you. How did the new design with the new materials work out in everyday life? How is the flat display, the camera, performance, battery life and the Galaxy AI? I desire to share all of that with you in this video. It is definitely going to be extremely exciting and I had a large amount of fun. I can tell you this, now we're starting after intro. Let's initiate with the design as customary and indeed at first glance, there haven't been many alterations in comparison to the previous version. However, if you take a closer look, you will observe that it has become slightly more angular. We no longer have a curved display on the front, but instead we now have a flat one. The frame itself is still rounded, which simply adds to the overall comfort of holding the smartphone and makes it a pleasure to use. Just the corners, yeah, you definitely still feel them in the palm of your hand without a doubt. Therefore, adjustments have been made to the materials and now it's no longer an aluminum frame, but a titanium frame, which has enhanced its durability. This one is kept matte. I really like the look of it, especially with the matte glass back. And here you can also find a variety of color options. First and foremost, we have titanium gray, titanium black, titanium violet, titanium yellow, and on the Samsung online page, there are a few more exclusive colors available for selection. However, I must mention that the titan gray color appears exceptionally stunning. Unfortunately, the video fails to capture its true beauty. The back of the device has a subtle shimmer, resembling a hint of gold under certain lighting conditions with a delicate touch of violet. I must emphasize that it looks incredibly nice and I frequently receive inquiries about this particular color option. It's not like that with every smartphone either. Just like every year, the Ultra comes in only one size, which is with the 6.8 inch display. A few individuals I gave the smartphone to expressed, wow, that is a genuinely large and weighty smartphone. Personally, I only use big smartphones in my everyday life, so it's not unusual for me at all. I really like it a lot. However, if you are interested in smaller smartphones, it could potentially be considered too large. The whole thing also weighs around 232 grams, so it's not exactly lightweight either. The display on the front is protected with the new Corning Gorilla Glass armor. That's even less reflective. Here we can also see the whole thing in comparison to the iPhone. You can definitely tell it's just a little bit darker. You can unlock the smartphone using the ultrasonic fingerprint sensor on the display. This one definitely runs very reliably and unlocks the smartphone quickly. On top of that, there's also a 2D face recognition with the front camera. Let's check the display now. Here we have a 6.8 inch AMOLED display with Quad HD plus resolution of 3120. But activate higher resolution first. This also drains battery a bit more. With the S24 Ultra, we have an adaptive refresh rate of 1 to 120 Hz. So depending on your activity, the frame rate adjusts. For example, if you only read a text, it's less than if you, for example, scroll through apps and so on. In terms of display quality, this model really shines, especially in terms of brightness, black levels, contrast and colors. These ones this year feel a bit paler and not as oversaturated as they were before. Personally, I like it better. And the whole thing is even a bit brighter with a maximum brightness of 2600 nits. Personally, I really like the display to surface ratio as well because the bezel is 15% thinner and this year the display borders are also symmetrical, which just looks better visually. As mentioned before, this year we don't have a curved display anymore, but we have a flat display and I definitely think the flat display is better for everyday use because we don't have any annoying artifacts on the sides with the colors or shadows. Only the Ultra comes with the S Pen, you always have it with you. And the whole thing is definitely very handy for quickly jotting down notes, highlighting in documents and so on. Well, the S Pen is definitely a nice to have. Personally, I don't really use it much in my everyday life. But then it gets really exciting right away, especially with the camera, because there's a lot going on here again. We have a 200 megapixel main camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle camera, a 10 megapixel telephoto lens with a triple optical zoom and a 50 megapixel lens with a five fold optical zoom. So this year we don't have a 10x optical zoom, it was replaced by a 5x optical zoom. 
Certainly I will add more pictures in this section once again, which I have not edited and are directly from the camera of the smartphone. With this you definitely get one of the best, if not the best camera on the smartphone market and as a result you get good dynamic range, contrast and lots of details in the pictures. The color balance is pleasant and I like it even better than the predecessor. Feel free to share your opinion in the comments section below the photos. I must say it was an absolute blast capturing images with it and I genuinely appreciated the impressive dynamic range and authentic look of the pictures. This was actually revised a bit, otherwise the feeling was a bit fuller, I had the impression. In terms of color, it's a bit more vibrant than reality in some areas, but that's clearly a matter of personal preference. When opting for the 200 MP mode, you will observe a higher level of detail and sharper images, particularly when zooming in, allowing for an enhanced visual experience. At this juncture, I will also demonstrate to you a few images with the ultra-wide angle. Here, I believe Samsung might be able to enhance it slightly. I'm just missing a few details, there simply has not been enough progress compared to previous years. However, I'm definitely a fan of zoom. In this case we have the 3x and 5x optical zoom and I really like the quality of the pictures. Especially the details and the sharpness. Here at this spot there's a 10x zoom again. For those who want to get closer, utilize the 100x zoom for an even closer view of the object here. It becomes a bit pixelated naturally, but it is still extremely impressive. At this juncture I will obviously include a few night photographs for you and Samsung appears to extract even greater quality from the images in this case, particularly in terms of brightness and details. It's definitely fun to take photos here even in the dark and all in all I have to say that I really really like the camera on the S24 Ultra again this year. Samsung really knows how to make a good camera. Feel free to share your opinion in the comments. What do you think about the topic? Then it's exciting again now with the Galaxy AI because Samsung also emphasized that during the presentation. And here there are definitely some practical features as well. For example, with this picture, I just went ahead and sharpened it and moved it around a bit. And then the AI proceeded to fill the resulting vacancy. Additionally, I completed the entire task in this photograph where I completely eliminated this bucket on the lawn and it certainly worked quite well in this particular instance. Then there's also a function that helps you remove reflections from the window in the pictures and in most cases it works pretty well, more or less. However, it's not quite perfect yet. But it's definitely already very impressive and I also think that over time the whole thing will naturally become much easier, more optimized and I also find it very practical that now you can simply translate the conversation into another language while making a phone call. Well, there are already a lot of practical features and I think there will be a lot more to come and it will become much more reliable in the next few months or even years, of course. As software, we're getting Android 14 with One UI and I've been liking it more for the past few years. It runs solid and smooth in everyday life and this year there's also the new feature that we get 7 years of software updates and 7 years of security updates. Totally awesome, when it comes to performance we now have the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and yeah, I don't really need to say much about it except that the smartphone runs really smoothly in everyday life. I did not have it hanging, leaking or anything of that sort. That has been an extremely reliable smartphone without a doubt in my testing process. And especially with the 7 years of software updates, yeah, you definitely need sufficient power to ensure smooth usage of the smartphone over a period of 7 years. Battery wise we have 5000 Ma and in my test I get around 7.5 to maybe in the best case scenario 9 hours of screen on time and all of this with the highest resolution and 120 Hz and stuff. Furthermore you can charge the smartphone with a maximum of 45 watts. A little more would definitely not hurt here I think. But what I really find handy is the reverse wireless charging because yeah, I was recently at the event, I was out all day and I had my iPhone with me and yeah, as luck would have it, the iPhone battery wasn't great. And then I could simply place it on the Samsung Galaxy and then the iPhone was charged wirelessly once more. So I obtained a few additional percentage points and successfully made it through the day. Yes, and that leads us to the conclusion of the video and all things considered, I genuinely enjoyed the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra to a great extent. I am a big fan of the color and the flat design with the flat display as well as the titanium frame. It really appeals to me on multiple levels. 
That is definitely a fancy smartphone. You cannot say it in any other way, even when talking about the processing. That is a really, really nice device. Camera wise, I have to say I'm really happy with the smartphone this year and also with the display. There are also many practical AI features now this year and most of them have definitely worked quite reliably here. Sure, the whole thing will be optimized, I hope so anyway, so that it works even more reliably, but otherwise I'm definitely curious to hear your opinion. What is your opinion on the S24 Ultra this year? Do you think it is a successful upgrade from the previous model, or do you believe there are still too many features missing? If you don't need the newer features right now, or even the new design with the flat display, then you can safely use the S23 Ultra. That is still a top smartphone and of course saves a few hundred euros. There will also be a comparison to the iPhone. Be sure to be excited. I'm still testing. It'll be online in the next few days, so be sure to subscribe to not miss anything. With that, I'd say we've reached the end. Take care. See you.